Hello and welcome to Phoenix Point. I'm Snapshot Games Community Manager and I'm going to be walking you through this early development tactical battle demo which we first revealed at the PC Gamer Weekender event in London. Before we start, please remember that this is an in-development build, nothing in this demo should be considered final and there are also many features and mechanics that have yet to be implemented. In this tactical demo, we're going to be playing as New Jericho. New Jericho is one of the three non-player factions in Phoenix Point. In the finished game, you will be playing as the Phoenix Project faction, but this is just something that we did a little bit different for the demo itself. We start here right next to an armadillo, which is one of the New Jericho vehicles. In the full game, these vehicles will be drivable. You'll be able to upgrade them, put weapons on them, and use them in tactical combat as well. We have four soldiers here. We've got a heavy, we've got a sniper, and we have two assaults, different classes that can use different weapons and different abilities. The weapons and equipment that each class carries determines the abilities they can use. So first of all here we've got the heavy selected and the first thing you'll notice is this blue outline and if we move our cursor beyond the blue uh, outline you will see the orange one here. So that might look familiar to some of you but it probably works a little bit differently mechanically than what you would expect. So first of all with our heavy selected if we look down on the heavy's weapon wheel we can see that we have our machine gun selected. Now the heavy machine gun fires a burst of 12 shots it's quite a slow firing weapon so if we want to be able to move and still have enough time left to fire that weapon we can only move within the blue area. If we move beyond that we won't have enough time left to fire. However if I switch this over to a weapon that doesn't require as much time to fire for example the rocket launcher you can now see that the blue area has actually expanded quite a lot. If we go beyond that the orange area hasn't changed that's our maximum movement. Our maximum movement is never affected but because this weapon takes less time to fire we can actually move further forwards and still have enough to actions remaining to be able to use the weapon. And also we can switch to our med kit and again you'll notice that that can change the blue area slightly but the orange area remains the same. Every soldier will have this hot wheel that allows them to select between three different weapons or pieces of equipment. Switching between them doesn't cost any actions. In the full game, which hasn't been implemented yet, there will be an inventory system where you will be able to uh, carry additional items, including ammunition in your backpack. You will be able to trade items with other soldiers and pick up items off the battlefield. So one of the first things that I want to do is start moving forwards. We need to head over here into this base, which is where we are going to encounter our first enemies. And one thing that you will notice that is slightly different from similar games is that we're not restricted to having to commit to an entire move. So if we want to, we can actually just edge forwards one space at a time. And it doesn't commit the move for us. So what I'm also going to do is just dash up to about here. So now I've moved into the orange area. I'm no longer able to fire my weapon, but I can still carry on moving a tile at a time. But let's go and move over here. Now we've spotted our first enemy. This enemy here is a Crabman Brawler. Now one thing that is quite good and unique in Phoenix Point is that all of the enemy types actually have the ability to mutate. So we can see this Crabman Brawler, he has a huge pincer on his right hand, this is a melee weapon, and on his left hand he has a shield which he can use to absorb or deflect a lot of shots. All of the ballistics within Phoenix Point are actually simulated, so weapons fire multiple projectiles and they will damage whatever they hit. So something like directional cover can be used to great effect. Let's just zoom back out slightly and start moving some of our soldiers into a better position. So let's go and move our heavy forwards. Now from these spaces our heavy doesn't have a shot and I can tell that because there's no line of sight indicator. If I move forwards to a space where I would have a line of sight, I would actually get a little indicator. For example, over here, you can see that wispy white line that's traveling towards the crab man. So I'd have a line of sight from any of those spots, but I don't have from over here. So let's just go ahead and uh, move forwards. We'll put ourselves in a position to get a better shot on a future turn, and we will just end the actions. We can move forwards with our other assault. Again, we can actually take a shot from one of these spaces over here. Let's just run forwards with the assault. Now, because we've spotted this crab man on our turn, he doesn't actually have his shield deployed. 
Now, he does have armor on different parts of his body. His shield is armored, and so is his carapace, which is his back. So if I was to shoot him in the back, I wouldn't do an awful lot of damage to him. But we can try and take a shot from the front. So let's go ahead and take a shot here. And what you will see is this indicator on the left says I have a 67% chance to hit. But that is a 67% chance per bullet. The assault rifle fires a burst of six shots, and any one of those bullets has a 67% chance to hit. We don't really have a chance to kill it because we won't do enough damage, but let's fire this weapon anyway and see what damage we can do. So as you can see, we did actually get a few hits to land. We also took some of the cover out because at least one of the bullets hit a crate that was on the top here and destroyed it. You'll also notice this little uh, symbol on the crabman's health, which indicates that we've hit and damaged his leg and his torso. We've also taken three of his hit points away. Let's go ahead and move up with the sniper. Again, I'm not bothered too much about cover because we are fighting against a melee alien at the moment. But you can see the little indicators down on the cursor that show me where the cover is. So, for example, this is half cover because it's not fully, uh, it's not full height for me to hide behind completely. If I was to move behind something that was taller, for example, this thing here would provide me full cover from this direction. But cover in Phoenix Point is pretty much what you see is what you get. So, even if I was standing here, not directly directly behind the cover, if I went ahead and moved my sniper here, my sniper is still actually being protected by this cover, because any shots coming from this direction would still have to bypass that cover in order to hit my sniper. I'm going to move the sniper forwards again. Now, one ability the sniper does have is this ability to target locations. This allows us to pick a specific spot on the enemy and try and shoot at it directly. So, for example, we could try and hit the head. We can see that the head has one armor. If we look at the carapace, we can see the carapace has three armor, so it's a lot more difficult to damage that. The shield actually has four armor, and if we look at something like the pincer arm, the pincer arm only has two. Other parts of it are going to be harder to hit. The legs, we've got a very, very small chance of hitting because they are behind cover. So let's go ahead and see if we can hit it right in the... What's going to be best for us? Let's go ahead and just see if we can hit it in the head. So we've got a 48% chance to kill it. 100% chance this is going to hit. Let's go ahead and take the shot. And there we go. We actually got it. Now you'll notice that my sniper actually gained one willpower for getting that kill. Willpower is represented down here next to the uh, character, and willpower is a resource that can be spent to perform additional actions. So in Phoenix Point we don't have cooldown based abilities, uh, a lot of abilities use willpower. For example, our assault has a uh, assault dash ability, which allows them to take a full movement after firing their weapon. That uses two willpower. And also the Overwatch ability requires one willpower. So you can't just constantly spam Overwatch turn after turn. You will eventually run out of willpower. If your willpower gets low, you have more chance of panicking. If one of your comrades gets killed, you will lose willpower. If you kill an enemy, you will gain willpower as well as for completing various objectives. If you do run out of willpower, you have the option to skip a turn and use this recover ability to regain willpower. We can also switch between our different soldiers by clicking on these little class icons down here below the character portrait. So pretty much everybody has moved at this point and can't really do anything else. We could use our assault dash with our assault here if we wanted to move any further forwards, which we don't. So let's just go and end the turn. Hopefully, we should see some more stuff we can shoot at. And here we go. We have another brawler. This one's actually deployed his shield now because he spotted us on his turn. And we've got another brawler heading to us along the battlements here. And again, he's also deployed his shield. So these guys are going to be a lot more difficult to kill. If I were to try and take a shot using my assault from this position, you would see that I've actually got no chance to do any damage. I've got a 100% chance to hit, but I'm not going to do any damage. And this is because every shot that I fire is basically just going to bounce off his shield. I'm not going to get any damage done here. And I don't have a line of sight on the other guy because he is up there above me and out of the way. So we can't really take a shot from here. However, cover is directional. If I were to go and stand right over here, and let's just go against this uh, wall just to protect myself a little bit from the other direction. So let's go ahead and move over there. Let's turn the camera around to make this a little bit easier. So we're going to go and stand over here. We didn't spot anything else, which is good. 
And do we have a better chance to hit now? Yeah. So now we still have a 100% chance to hit, but we're actually going to do between 6 and 8 damage because we're no longer actually hitting his shield or his carapace. We're taking direct shots at him. So there we go. Every single one of our shots hit. We've done 6 damage. We've disabled his torso, which is going to de um, reduce his maximum health. We've also put a bleed on him, which means he's going to lose 1 health per turn. Now, one thing you will notice here is that I've actually still got movement remaining. And this is because I didn't move the full distance that I could do before firing my weapon. So I can actually now still move around. I have very little movement left. But let's go ahead and park things there and end the action with that character. Let's go ahead and use our heavy. Let's move him a little further forwards. In fact, let's move him over to the left, just so that he is further away from this brawler up on the battlements. And we're actually taking cover behind this dead Chiron, which is here on the bridge. I'm going to take a shot with the heavy. Now, the heavy's machine gun. You'll see we have this symbol here above it. This means that it is armor piercing. So we should have a fairly good chance of doing some damage. Uh, we fire a burst of 12 shots from the heavy machine gun. And we've got a 60% chance that each one of those is going to hit. You will notice at the moment that most of the weapons are showing infinite ammo. This won't be a factor in the full game. In the full game, you will actually have ammunition. You will need to reload. You'll have different ammunition types. Let's go ahead and fire the weapon. And we actually got quite lucky there. The machine gun isn't very accurate at long range, but the fact that it can go through armor makes it very, very useful. Now, we do have that guy upon the battlements who is a little bit of an issue. With our sniper selected, we can see we might actually have a decent shot. Now, we could go ahead and target a body part again, or we can just use a straight-up shot. Uh, we've got a 98% chance to hit, and we would do 0 to 6 damage, so we don't have a chance to kill. Or we could, once again, aim and try and take out a specific part. We don't really have much chance of disabling anything. We do have a 90% chance to disable his shield arm, so let's go ahead and take that shot. We actually missed. We hit the battlements, and this is another thing with the cover system because he was stood behind that cover the shot actually hit the cover and not him so that's a little bit of a problem for us but it's not too terrible at the moment we are going to set up some overwatch so let's go ahead and move our assault guy over here we're going to overwatch for the cost of one willpower and let him come towards us now you'll notice that we only fired uh, three or four shots there with our overwatch. It is less with overwatch than a normal shot. So he's actually moved forwards now. That's fine. That makes that a little bit easier for us. We can use tab to select between our soldiers. And we can do the same thing that we did last time. We can move over here. We can see him from the side. And we've now got a relatively decent chance to do some damage. And we actually got a kill. Fantastic. So that tops up our willpower which isn't really a problem because we're at full willpower let's go ahead and use one of the abilities we have with our heavy which is this jet jump here this allows us to move a very large uh, distance in a very short period of time let's go and get ourselves up here on the battlements next to this uh, light you will see these blue areas these blue areas represent mission objectives that we can reach for some bonuses on this demo but let's go ahead and get ourselves up here for a nice height advantage. Now the heavy can't actually climb because of his heavy armor, so he has to rely on his jump jets to allow him to get up there. Let's just go and march forwards with everybody else, get them further into the action. I think I'm just going to leave you there. I don't want to go too far forwards with you. And we'll move up with the sniper as well, keeping him in some cover from inside the base itself. Let's go ahead and end the turn. And here we see our next enemy type. This is another mutation variation of the Crabman. Now you see he's fired at my sniper there, and my assaults, both of them, actually took a shot. Three bullets each. So let me explain what happened there. First of all, we have this new enemy type. As I said, it's a variation of the Crabman mutation, and this guy actually has a machine gun on his right arm. We just zoom in so you can get a better look. He has a machine gun on his right arm and a grenade launcher on his left. Now, we actually got lucky with that return fire. We have uh, caused some injury to his, right, his left arm. We've disabled it so he can no longer use his grenade launcher. He has one health remaining and he actually has a bleed. So he's going to die on the next turn anyway. So the reason why we got some free shots at him is because two of our characters, the assaults, have this ability, which is return fire. The return 
fire ability is actually part of the assault rifle. And what that means is, if anybody attacks someone nearby to our assaults, our assaults will automatically return fire, and that's what they did. So they only got three shots each, but it was enough. Let's go and start moving some of these guys forwards, get them into a better position. Ideally, we would like to get up here to, uh, onto this uh, guard tower. Maybe we can move up there with our sniper. Let's move forwards with some more assaults. I'm not worried about trying to kill that gunner, because I know that he will die on the next turn anyway. Now, there aren't too many places that we can go with the heavy right now, simply because he's quite slow. But let's go ahead and move him over here. He's going to jump down and move forwards. I think we were quite lucky. Our sniper didn't actually take any damage. Nope, we've got full health, which is good. Again, we're going to avoid taking a shot at that enemy. And we'll just move forwards. Let's end the turn there and see what happens. There we go. The bleed killed him off exactly as I expected it would. Okay, let's see if we can get our assault up into this tower. There are ladders on here that do allow us to climb up. How far can we get on a single turn? We can actually get all the way into the tower. So let's go ahead and do that. Stay in cover. See another armadillo over here. Now, prepare our defensive perimeter. It's only a matter of time before we're overrun. Let's now, down we gained some willpower there. We have spotted another enemy. We've got one on the roof up here. It's another gunner. He's going to be a little bit tricky. We do have some cover and we're high up, so we've got the height advantage going for us. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can move into a better position with our other assault. Maybe we'll be able to get a shot off if he moves towards us. I think we'll go and put on Overwatch just to give us some opportunity there. Let's take our sniper. We don't have a lot of movement with him. But we can put our sniper over here behind this cover. And again, we will Overwatch. We'll pay that willpower cost. And... Just to be safe, let's go and just overwatch with everybody. Let's make sure we really give that guy a hard time if he comes towards us. We do have a little bit of movement left here. I don't think any of us is really going to help. So that gunner is probably going to fire at the guy we've got on the roof. He may even fire his grenade launcher. He didn't. He just fired at us. Did do some damage to our armor. He's, he has shredded some armor. We have another one down here. That's another gunner. And we're actually getting some reaction shots now. And that was very lucky. Got a return fire here. There we go. So return fire saved us a little bit. Now my assault, the guy that's up the tower, he has actually taken some damage. He's lost some health. He's not bleeding right now. He has taken some damage to his torso. We could use our med kit to heal ourselves. Let's go ahead and just do that. We'll heal ourselves up. Now, in the full game, you will have another class called the Technician, who is not in the demo. The Technician is able to repair injured limbs. We'll just switch you back to your gun, and you're not going to do anything for this turn. Do we see anything else that we want to take out? Let's move our heavy into a slightly safer position. We won't put you on Overwatch, we'll just leave you there. Let's move our sniper over in this direction. We've spotted another enemy. Actually, two there on top of each other. As I said, this is an early development build, so expect to see a few little bugs and glitches. And we've got another gunner in there as well. Now, we can actually take a shot at these. The gunner is probably going to be the bigger issue. We do have a clean shot at him. 0% chance to kill. Okay, so we've disabled his torso, and he has a bleed on him. So he's going to die in two turns anyway. And we can actually move over here with our assault. And we do have a shot at him. So let's see if we can get lucky and finish him off. And we did. Now, friendly fire is a thing in Phoenix Point. It is quite possible to shoot your own guys in the back if you're not careful. So you do have to be careful there. And here is the Crab Queen. This is one of the bosses that we have in the game. So there will be multiple different types of boss. That will turn up at various points. And these bosses will be persistent. One of the things that these bosses will do is they will try and escape from battle if you do a lot of damage to them. And uh, they will also uh, mutate and adapt and evolve. So here comes the queen. She's just basically coming in and wrecking everything. There is a full terrain destruction system in Phoenix Point. You're taking a shot at my sniper, which I don't appreciate. Don't think my assaults have a line of sight, so they're not returning fire, unfortunately. 
We've got a couple of brawlers moving in as well. They've deployed their shields. Another gunner on the roof. So we've got a lot of guys around. Well, one of the first things that I want to try and do is maybe do something about these brawlers. Now, we do have grenades here on our assaults. I'm not too sure the range. Yeah, we do have enough range there. Let's go ahead and throw a grenade. We can hit both of those assaults, uh, both of those crab men with the wrong grenade. As you can see, we've done quite a lot of damage to the scenery, but we've also done a fair bit of damage to the crab men. We've applied some bleeds, we've damaged some limbs, so it's going to make life a lot more difficult for them. Does our sniper have a good shot at anybody? Well, our sniper could try and finish one of these guys off. I'd be more tempted to try and get rid of that gunner. In fact, let's use our targeting ability. And if we can, I would like to target one of his arms and disable it. Preferably his grenade arm. I'm more worried about him actually hitting me with a grenade. So we took the shot and we actually missed there. The cover the cover saved him. The cover has been destroyed. But we, we missed the shot, unfortunately. We have our heavy over here, who I'm going to save. Let's switch back to our assault. And I think what we'll do with the assault is we will take a shot at the queen. Now, one thing you're going to notice with the assault is we have the ability to target every, any single body part. And that is because this is a boss, and on a boss, anyone can target the individual body parts. Unfortunately, every single part of the queen has so much armor, we can't realistically do any damage to her. So we're not going to take a shot with the assault. That would just be a waste of ammunition. We're going to instead switch back over to our heavy. So here's our heavy here. And we're going to switch to our rocket launcher with the heavy. And let's take a shot with this. The, the missile has a huge range. So it will do a lot of AoE damage. And we are going to um, fire on the queen. So let's go ahead and take that shot. In comes the rocket, hits the ground, and you can already see we've shredded nine armor, we've done five damage, and we've also disabled quite a lot of body parts there, but she's not down yet. Now I'm going to back off a little bit with my heavy, I don't want him um, too close to the queen. So even though we fired, we can still actually back right off here, so let's go ahead and do that, putting behind some cover. And we've still got this guy up in the tower. I'm not terribly convinced that there are any body parts that we've shredded enough armor to be able to take a decent shot at. Let's just have a quick look. We have damaged some of the bits and pieces. The abdomen has a lot of health. We're not going to do any damage there. The softest part on the queen is the thorax, which only has three armor. But we're really not going to be able to do anything. We do have a grenade, though, which we can use. But I do think we need to be in a better spot to throw it. If we try and throw it in here, it'll bounce off the roof and we'll end up getting killed. So let's go ahead and run down here. We can actually just jump down because we're wearing some decent armor. It won't break our legs. And let's throw another grenade into the mix. So once again, we've disabled a few more body parts now. We've disabled one of her pincers completely. So that reduces her ability to attack. Now again, it's not present in the demo, but in the full game, the Queen will have various different methods of attack, so disabling her pincers alone won't be enough to stop her from attacking us. Let's end our actions, because we can't do an awful lot else right now. A couple of the crab men die from the bleed effects they have on them, which is fine. And the aliens will actually lose willpower as well when they start to die. So we've got this gunner on the roof, he's actually just taking a shot at our sniper. Our return fire misses. And the queen is... Oh! Well, that was unfortunate. The queen has basically just stomped all the way through the guard tower. And taken out one of our assaults. So that's very unfortunate. So as you can see, it is a fully destructive terrain. You do have to be careful where you put things. Uh, I will remind you that, again, this is a work in progress, so the terrain destruction system isn't finalised yet. Uh, but everything is basically going to be destroyable, so you really do have to think about where you put your characters. So let's go ahead and see if we can finish off that queen. Let's go ahead and move back over here with the heavy. We're going to go and take another shot with this rocket launcher. Having played this several times before, it's always nice to know what's coming. You can save your explosives for this particular task. But without explosives, she is a lot more difficult to contend with. So we, we did some more damage. Uh, we've disabled some more legs. But we do still need to take out some uh, other crabmen that are causing us some problems. So this is our assault. Our assault does have a shot on the queen, actually. Do we have anywhere we can hit that has no armor? 
looks like we've got a relatively decent chance to hit a few things down here. No chance to kill, unfortunately. But let's just go straight in over here. 100% chance to hit. Almost impossible to miss these big ones. So that gave us some damage. We got 8 damage out of that. Very nice. So what we could do is we could use our Assault Dash ability. We can still actually move quite far. So we could move a lot further away. We can go ahead and move all the way over here. And then if we wanted to, we could use our Assault Dash to move even further. We've got our Sniper. We don't actually have a decent line of sight on the other two targets right now. So let's go ahead and see what damage we can do to the Queen. Let's go and keep going for those soft, fleshy parts if we can. Let's go for the Thorax. She does have some bleed effects on her. She has one bleed effect for every disabled limb. So she currently has five disabled limbs, so she's taking five damage per turn. So that got her on the roof. He's going to be a little bit of a problem. He may decide to use his grenades. Again, our return fire is blocked by the roof of the hangar. Now the Queen's mobility is severely going to be reduced by the number of crippled legs she has. Here comes the other gunner. He's actually taking shots at my sniper. Now we do get some return fire there. We've disabled his grenade arm. Has destroyed the cover that my sniper was hiding behind. And here comes Queenie. Well, we don't have any rockets left on the heavy, so let's go and switch back over to our machine gun. And we'll actually be able to do a very good amount of damage with the heavy here. So if we go ahead and target the queen, got a 20% chance to kill here. 23 to 36 damage now that the armor is gone. Let's just give her the full lot. Did we get her? Yes. Uh, no. Yes, we got her. Down she goes. There's the queen finished off. So now we just need to mop up. So who do we have left? We've got our Assault. Who can you see currently? You've got that gunner on the roof. You've got a 50% chance to hit. Not too sure I like those 50-50 odds. Uh, we do have a 100% chance to kill this guy over here, so let's take it. There we go. Now, the reason we've got a 100% chance to kill is because he's going to die on the end of the next turn anyway because he's got a bleed on him. So there's a, he's basically got no health left. He's dead on the next turn. Uh, we have our Sniper who has lost all of his cover. Let's move him... We won't cover from this direction because that's where we have the uh, the thing shooting at us. Let's... No, we won't have a line of sight from there. There aren't going to be many places where we'll have a decent line of sight, actually. So maybe we'll just stay where we are and take the shot. Let's see if we can disable something. Let's see if we can disable his gun arm. 40% chance of that happening. And we didn't actually get it. We did clip his leg, but we've also removed a good portion of his cover. So I'm happy about that. And let's go ahead and just end our actions. There's that gunner dying because of the bleed effect. So don't have to worry about him. So I think we've just got the one gunner left right, right now. Oh no, we've got another brawler. So let's see if we can go ahead and finish these guys off. Let's use the heavy. This guy is quite out of cover. We've only got a 20% chance to hit though. He's quite far away. So that's not that useful for us. Let's go ahead and check with the assault. Uh, the Assault has a better chance of hitting. Let's go and take those shots. We did do some damage. Now you will also see, if we can find that guy now, this little icon here. This guy is starting to panic. Uh, mostly because they lost so much willpower when the Queen died. And we've got our Sniper. Our Sniper can just go and finish him off. Let's go and finish him off. There we go. He's down. All we have to worry about now is one Brawler. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Let's go ahead and put you in some cover. So we've taken a fair few injuries. We can put the heavy on Overwatch, actually. And he may well be able to deal with the brawler when he comes in. Now, another thing that willpower will be used for in the full game is you'll be able to use it to chain multiple actions together. So instead of being able to just move a few times and take a shot, you'll be able to take multiple shots. You'll be able to perform special actions. You'll even be able to combo actions together with other members of your team. Let's go ahead and move this assault guy into a better position. Hopefully we don't uncover anything else. Now this guy does have his shield deployed, which is not ideal. So let's go ahead and overwatch instead. We may have even had a spare grenade there, which we could have used. But I decided not to take that option. I'm going to go ahead and move the heavy over here. Let's get everybody nice and far forwards. We'll deal with this guy when he comes around. We won't get him on this turn. And we'll put the sniper on overwatch as well, just in case he does happen to get around the corner. 
So our assault's taking some shots there. We only did one damage. He's actually hiding around the corner, and that is something we don't appreciate. So do we have a spare grenade? We do indeed. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. We should take his cover out. There we go. We've actually removed his cover. He is now finished. Let's go and kill him off with the heavy. And there we are. This has been a demo of the Phoenix Point Tactical Battle System. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you're interested to learn more about Phoenix Point, please visit www.phoenixpoint.info.